pleasure, pleasure it is for me to be with you. You know, the last time I was in your church, it was the day that John announced that you were going to have to leave the other building. And I think people were kind of, their heads were down. And then they said, we're going over to the, what do you call this, auditorium, uh, sports arena, whatever. It's a great place. And I believe you've about doubled in number from what I saw uh, the last time I was here. So, and you know, I am so pleased to be with a church that understands Israel because your pastors, they understand, they understand. You know, it's, it's, it's a revelation. It's right in the Bible, but it's still a revelation. If, if you don't have that revelation, you don't see it. And so I just want you to know, I'm really, really pleased to be here with you. And our representatives here in Ireland are Miriam Beatty and Mary Kelly and Eamon Kelly, and we just are so thankful for them. I'm going to talk to you about a message that Paul made to the church. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because I, I know that you already have a very deep understanding of Israel. You understand. But it's also, the scripture says, you know, that we have to be ready to give uh, an account, a witness of what we believe. And so I wanted to go through a chapter in the Bible that Paul wrote to the church. And so I call this message, Paul's message to the church. Now you know this stuff, but I pray that you'll be able to give an account to other people who don't know this, okay? That is my purpose. As we know, God made many promises to Abraham. The promise of Abraham, in fact, the new, in the New Testament, the Abrahamic covenant is usually called the promise. God gave Abraham the promise. And so I want to name four things that the Lord promised Abraham. There's many other things, but these are really, I think, the main ones. First of all, in Genesis 12, 3, it says, I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. So, say it with me. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. That's a promise of God to Abraham. Number two, Genesis twenty two eighteen. In your descendants, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Can we say that together? In your descendants, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Number three is Genesis fifteen eighteen. I will give your descendants this land from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates. Shall we say it? I will give your descendants this land from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates. And last one and the most important one is Genesis 17:7. 7. I will establish an everlasting covenant to be a God to you and your descendants. Together, let's say it. I will establish an everlasting covenant to be a God to you and to your descendants. Do you think that God really meant that? Do you know that so many in the church 
don't really believe that. It's called replacement theology. Replacement theology said the Jews were so sinful, so bad, and they crucified Christ, and therefore God rejected them, and they are no longer Israel, but the church is Israel. Have you ever heard that before? I can tell you that that interpretation of the word of God does not come from the God of Israel. It may come from other gods, but not the God of Israel. So here is the message that Paul brought to the church. Now I'm going to change a few words to make it really, really up to date. Okay, so you with me? Uh, you'll probably see it on the screen, but I'm going to change here and there some words, and I think you'll understand why. We're going to make it up to date, 2019. The promises of God to Abraham, we understand. But that's Old Testament. Many people say that doesn't count anymore. So let's, we're going to see what Paul said. We're going to start with Romans 10, 20. But Isaiah is very bold, and he says, I was found by those who did not seek me, and I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. Now here, it's quite clear he's talking to the Gentiles. These were people that didn't even know him, didn't ask for him, but he made himself known. It's important for you to always remember that the word Gentile does not mean a second-class citizen. It is the word in Hebrew for nation. Nation. If you want to know the word in Hebrew, goy is a nation. God said to Abraham, I will make a great goy out of you. Goyim means the nations. So when you see the word Gentiles, it simply means nations, okay? So God has promised us that in heaven, we're going to see every tribe and every language and every uh, nation in heaven. So that's what God wants. He wants people from every Gentile nation. Okay, we continue, verse 21. But to Israel, God said, all day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Not a very good uh, way to be, is it? But this was Israel, contrary, disobedient. We continue now to the next verse, which is Romans 1. I say then, has God cast away his people, the Jews? Certainly not. Wow. That doesn't fit the replacement theology too well. But he said, for I also am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, the Jews, whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel saying, Lord, they, the Jews, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. And I, I'm a lone ranger Jew. I'm the only one and they're seeking my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 Jews who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, Paul says, there is a remnant of Jews according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it's no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. 
But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect, now whether this means the elect of the Jews or the elect of the nations, they've attained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it's written, God has given the Jews a spirit of stupor, eyes that they could not see, and ears that they should not hear to this very day. We skip now to verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled, have the Jews stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. You got it? But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the nations, to Ireland. Now, if the Jews' fall is riches for the world, and their failure, their failure, their fall, their failure, is riches for the nations, how much more their fullness? What does fullness mean? Well, let's see. For I speak to you, the nation of Ireland, inasmuch as I'm an apostle to the nations, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those Jews who are my flesh and save some of them. For if the Jews being cast away is reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? You know, the Lord has given us a prototype in the Bible of this whole situation. You remember Joseph? Joseph is a prototype of the Messiah, of the Savior. Now his brothers, the Israelites, hated him, were jealous of him, decided to kill him, threw him in a pit, finally sold him to the Gentiles. And because of that terrible sin to their brother, that brother became the savior of the known world, Egypt, and the savior of his brothers. You see, their sin caused him to save his brothers. And so the sin of Israel, and the Romans had quite a bit to do with it too, you know. Their sin brought salvation to the world. That's pretty good, isn't it? So, and Yeshua said, Jesus said, I did, nobody takes my life, I give my life. I came, I was born to die for the people of Ireland, for all of us, for me. Verse 16, for if the first fruit, which was Abraham, the first fruit was Abraham, is holy, the lump is also holy. The whole nation of Israel is holy. Wow, that's quite a statement. And if the root, which again was Abraham, is holy, so are the branches. Who are the branches? The Jewish people. And if some of the Jews were broken off, and you Irish believers, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of Abraham and the prophets, 
which was the fatness of the olive tree, the prophets, the word of God, do not boast against the Jewish nation, the branches. But if you boast, remember that you Irish believers do not support the root, which is Abraham, but the root, the faith of Abraham, supports you. You will say then, the Jewish people were broken off that I, an Irish believer, or wherever you come from, might be grafted in. Well said. Because of the unbelief of the Jews, they were broken off. And you Irish believers, you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. And you know, replacement theology is really haughty, isn't it? I'm Israel, not you anymore. For if God did not spare the Jewish people, the natural branches, he may not spare you, the Irish believers, either. Therefore, consider the goodness and the severity of God on those Jews who fell. Severity, but towards you, the Irish believers, goodness. If you, Irish believers, continue in his goodness, Otherwise, you, the believers in Ireland, will also be cut off. God forbid. Verse 23. And they, the Jews also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft the Jews back in again. If you Irish believers were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated, cultivated olive tree of Israel, how much more will these Jews, who are the natural branches of Israel, be grafted in to their own olive tree, the Israel of God. For I do not desire, brethren, that you Irish believers should be ignorant of this, menace, this mystery, lest you in Ireland, you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of Ireland and the nation's has come in. Now, this word fullness is very interesting. I don't think it means 12 o'clock midnight on April the 19th and whatever year the fullness comes in. It's a process, isn't it? We're beginning to see Jews saved in Israel. When I went to Israel in uh, 1967, there were maybe a handful, maybe a handful of born-again Jews in the state of Israel. Now, I saw a newspaper article say there's around 30,000. Some say 50,000. We don't know, but I can tell you something is happening in Israel just as the prophets prophesied. And so the very next thing, you know what it says? So all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob received the name Israel, as we know. For this is my covenant with them, the Jewish people. When I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, the Jewish people are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, the Jews are beloved for the sake of the fathers. 
For the gifts and the calling of God to the Jews and to anybody else he calls are irrevocable. You got it? For as you Irish believers were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through the Jews' disobedience, even so, these Jewish people also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you, the Jews may also obtain mercy. What do you think about that? For God has committed them all, everybody, to disobedience that he might have mercy on all, on everybody. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Now, I want to make one point that is key. It is the key to the destruction of replacement theology. Everybody know what replacement theology is? You know what that is? Because if you don't, raise your hand. I'd be glad to tell you. Uh, Replacement theology simply means God chose the Jewish people to be his own special people, to be a light to the Gentiles. I will bless uh, through you and your descendants. I will bless the whole world. That's what he promised. But Israel sinned. They left the Lord. They didn't obey the law. And when Yeshua came along, They didn't believe him because they didn't believe Isaiah. They didn't believe Jeremiah. They didn't believe Zechariah. They didn't believe Moses. Yeshua said, if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me. So they didn't believe. And then when Yeshua came, they said, crucify him. And they handed him over to the Gentiles. And together, the Jews and the Gentiles crucified Yeshua. So, replacement theology said, you know, God was so angry at the Jews crucifying Christ that he forsook them. They are no longer his special ones. And the church takes the place of Israel. So whenever you see Israel, you have to put the church, not the people of Israel. Now, that will make your Bible a total, we have a word in Hebrew. Have you ever heard this word, balagan? Balagan. It's a mess. It will, you, you cannot understand half of the Bible if Israel isn't Israel anymore. Because the church is made up of the nations and Israel. Not, not replacing Israel. I mean, we could talk about that for five hours, you know. But the Bible does not say that the nations replace Israel. The body of believers in the nations. Because then if everybody's Israel, what what happened to all the tribes and the tongues and the nations that are going to be in heaven? It's just one, just Israel up there? No, no. So, verse 9 in chapter, in Romans 3, says this. What then? Are we better than they? Are the Irish better than the Jews? Not at all. Not at all. Whoops, sorry. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks, let's put Ireland, that they are all under sin. Do you see that verse? That's a really important one. A really important verse. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. 
There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And verse 18 and 19 say, there's no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, the law of Moses, whatever it says, it says to those Jews who are under the law that every mouth, do you know what every mouth means? It means Jews and the nations, Jews and the, and the Gentiles. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh, not Ireland, not England, not the Vatican, not anybody will be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin for the world. There's an example that I think really brings this truth out. There was a little village in the United States and they had a well where they got their water. This is some years ago. And all of a sudden, everybody in that village got sick. And they couldn't figure it out, so they called the state officials to come and see what, why everybody in the village was, was sick. And so they came, and what did they do? They headed straight for the well, the well that gave the water to the whole village. And they took a cup of it, took it back to the lab, and found it was totally polluted. They came back, and they looked down into the well and found a pig with his piglets down at the bottom of the well. Now here's the point. These officials were giving a test. The law of Moses was a test to human nature. They, these officials did not have to take all the water out of the well to check it. All they needed was a sample. And that sample showed it was polluted and they knew the whole well was polluted. Israel, in, the, in, in uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10, it says Israel was an example to the world in many ways. And when Israel sinned, we understand that the whole well is polluted. So now, what do we do after we see what God has promised and the nations understand that Israel is coming back to God and plays a part in these last days? Do you know that there's a puzzle that God puts all the pieces in? And Israel's not the whole puzzle, but it's a piece of the puzzle. And if they're not in there, the picture is completely not complete. So you see, God made promises to Israel, and God can't break them. He gave his promises to Abraham, and they are going to be kept. Now, what is this plan? This plan is that Israel would return to her land in the last days, the land of Israel, and Israel would return to the God of Israel. And that is the King of the Jews. The King of the Jews, Jesus Yeshua. So this is God's plan. Now, there's many verses in the Bible that talk about the nations helping bring the Jews back to him. 
You see, the Jewish people, through much trial and tribulation, brought the Bible so that we and the whole world can have the Bible. They kept this Bible together. Some of them lost their lives. There were prophets that lost their lives, sometimes through other Jews and sometimes through enemies all over the place. But there's, it's a two-way street. As the nations, as the Irish people, certainly, help bring the Jewish people back to him, then they in turn will bless Ireland. God will bless Ireland. He promised, I will bless those who bless you. So then the Gentiles, the nations, it says in Isaiah 60, verse 3, the nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now, replacement theology people, they see this verse, oh, the nations will come to your life. They, oh, that doesn't mean Israel. That means the Messiah. Of course it means the Messiah. Messiah is the light. But do you know what? Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13, 47 said this, for so the Lord has commanded us I have set you as a light to the nations that you shall be for salvation to the ends of the earth. You see, Yeshua said in, in Matthew, he said, I am, no, in John, John 8, 12. I am the light of the word. Okay, we, we agree to that. Yeshua is the light of the world. Absolutely. But then Yeshua said in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. And that's why um, Paul and Barnabas said, the Lord's commanded us to be the light. And so Israel is again going to be of the light. I can promise you they're going to be the light. In fact, Isaiah 2, 3 says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem Jerusalem is going to be the center where the Messiah reigns. But the Messiah said, I will not return until you say, Jews, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You got it? He's not coming back until there's revival in Israel. And the scripture says, that the nations will carry the Jews on their shoulders. And that means, I believe, physically and spiritually. So if we partner together, folks, we're going to see the fulfillment of the promises that God has made. And as I said, when I was there in 1967, which was 52 years ago, Hardly a soul there was a born-again believer. And they actually thought, the, the, the Jewish people that I spoke to, the Israelites, they, they thought that Christians hated Jews. If you're a Christian, you hate Jews, period. They had just come out of the Holocaust. And the doctrine of replacement theology was everywhere. And that's what they thought. This woman told me that Christianity is the worst religion she told me, an Israel, Israeli woman, Christianity is the worst religion that was ever created by man. See, but now is the time. Israel sees that the only real friends that they have in the whole wide world are born again evangelical Christians. It's amazing that in the United States, not in all Europe, but in the United States, even the Jewish population, as they become more atheistic and so on, they don't really care that much about Israel. It's the evangelical Christians who understand the word. So that is why I'm here. I'm going to show you right now 
what God is doing in Israel today. Here's a slideshow. And Amen. It's somebody's got it. Okay, here we go. This is just a, a quick slideshow, and I'll show you a, a couple of short videos after this. This is a picture of a movie, Ruach Hadasha, A New Spirit. There's a guy named uh, Yaakov Damkani, who we always called our number one evangelist in the whole state of Israel. Everybody saw him as the, the strongest uh, evangelist. He'd go out on the streets. He'd go anywhere. He'd talk to anybody. He used to be a real gangster guy. And he went to New York, and he actually tried to rob a Brinks truck and didn't succeed. I mean, only God, you know, could have kept him out of jail for the rest of his life. But he ran into some believers and gave his heart to the Lord and became one of the strongest believers in the country. And a, uh, a filmmaker who is a believer, a believer, a new believer, said, I want to make a movie about him. So this movie went into theaters all over Israel, talking about how a man went from a gangster to a Jewish messianic believer. It was a powerful thing, and I believe in the heavenlies, you know, it did something. So this is just an example of what God is doing in Israel now, okay? Here is a young man who was in the army, and he had PTSD. He was not able to sleep. In fact, it was so bad that he was in an army hospital, mental hospital. He simply could not sleep. He had seen too much in the war. And uh, the Gaza, you think those wars are just like, oh, Israel goes over and bombs a little bit. No, they're vicious. They're vicious wars. And so he was not able to sleep. And he was watching TV one night in the hospital there, and he saw something about Jesus. I don't even know what he saw. I don't know if it was Sid Roth or somebody like that. But he got interested in the New Testament. So he went and he told the army people, um, I, want a, I want a Bible with a New Testament. And they said, are you kidding? You're a Jew. Like, I want a Bible with a New Testament. So they thought, well, this guy's a little quacky anyway. So we'll, we'll, we'll you know, okay, we'll try to find him a Bible. So they went to the bookstore. Stymaski's bookstore is the biggest uh, chain. That, no Bible with a New Testament. They, they didn't have it even for sale. And so... The guy said, no, I want a Bible. You find me a Bible with a New Testament. So the army went to the, an Anglican church and asked if they could have a Bible. And they gave him, and he started reading the Bible. And the guy didn't even know English. But he wanted so badly to read it that he had a dictionary there, Hebrew, English. And he started reading the Bible and long story, this guy became born again, completely healed, sleeps like a baby, and a real witness now. This is when, this is uh, our new uh, pastor um, to the right, and he took over the congregation, hallelujah, uh, that we started, and they're baptizing him now. Next. Here they are out in the Mediterranean Sea. This is our place where we, uh, we tend to... I'm sorry, I know I'm blocking, aren't I? Blocking the way... But anyway, that's what we... Um, that's, that's how we do baptisms in Israel. Next. Now this is uh, in the Jordan River. We also use the Jordan River. Why not, you know? And so uh, Moti Cohen, the guy on the right... He was one of our first believers uh, 40 years ago. And uh, he was a juvenile delinquent in a, in a hard school. How we got to him, I don't even remember. And he came to the Lord, and he, he's a powerful witness. He's uh, a, from a Sephardic Jew. And so he has a whole opening to Sephardic Jews. 
if for whatever reason, Sephardic Jews, um, there's less believers than the Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, don't ask me why. I don't know. But anyway, it's coming along, and he is now out on the streets at night. Go to the next one, please. And um, in, in salvation. This is Tanya. Uh, our worship leader in the congregation, and she's all, she and her husband are employees of Maoz in Israel, and they do music. They are very, very talented musicians, and they're in the middle of a lot of the recordings we're doing. Next. They all, she also puts together choirs um, all over the country. In fact, we have a program for children to learn music or voice because we, the, the dream is to see a new generation of worshipers rise up in Israel from Dan to Beersheba. So all these kids are from all different congregations, but we give them scholarships to learn uh, music. And this is a recording. As you can see, they're in a recording. Next. This is my husband in the back there, and um, this is right after a recital of some of the kids in the center of the country. They have recitals around the country in different areas. And see that little boy with the white shirt? He's a star, let me tell you. He is unbelievable. We'll see what God does with him. But he and uh, two others went to an international contest for music that Tanya took them to and all three of them won prizes for their music. So it's really, really great. Next. This is a group called um, Mikedim, Mikedim uh, which is a group of musicians. Most of these we have helped or they've been in our congregation. And now they go around the world. But they may come here someday. Uh, they're really, really good. Have you ever heard of any of Mikedim music? Yes? How many have heard Miketa music? You can get it, uh, of course, on uh, I iTunes and things like that. Miketa, M-I-Q-E-D-E-M, I believe. Okay? Next. These are three young men, Arabs from Nazareth. And they are incredibly wonderful, fine, born-again believers. And their music is outstanding. So we have, um, no, go back, yeah, to that one. Uh, these guys, <laughs> anyway, the guys. These are Arabs too, by the way, the other ones. Um, anyway. Uh, you'll hear just a, a little bit of their music on a video that will show in just a minute. But this, the, this, <laughs> devil, get out of here. So, um, this couple, can, you can move on to the next one. They are, this is a new believer because we also sponsor and help Arab uh, ministries and even in the, this is West Bank, so that's why they have to close, you know, hide their faces. But she's a new believer and, uh, from the Muslim religion, as you can see her head covering. And that's what's happening. It's happening, folks. It's happening even among the Arabs. Okay, next. Here's an Arab being baptized in the Jordan River. And these kids here are, um, a lot of them are from Muslim homes. But um, a Christian Arab who we support, they do uh, summer camps for, and the parents are happy to get rid of their kids for a week, you know. And so they let them go to this Christian camp. These kids learn the Bible stories and are given a Bible when they leave. And, and the, the wonderful pastor that we support, he still has his head on, you know. So, yeah. Next, this is Katsir. Katsir is another organization which we partner with. These are teenagers. Now listen, growing up in Israel 
is a very difficult thing for young people because there's so few believers. It's probably for a lot of people here too. You know, you don't have a lot of uh, Christian kids in every school. Well, in Israel, there's real resistance. And the roughest time is when kids hit their teens, right? And so there's a great effort in Israel to get these kids into camps. These are, these are children of believers. And they say, well, we've got to keep them in the Lord. They can't let them backslide. Uh, and then, because this is the critical time. And Ari and I, we have two children, and we fought for them. We fought for them. We were not going to give them to the devil. And God won. And so we have a real heart for the children of pioneers in Israel. And some of them are not serving the Lord. In fact, Ari and I have a list, which we pray for every day, of our good friends who have really worked for the Lord and then their kids are not serving the Lord. So this is, it's better to keep them than to have to pray them back in, right? So this is, uh, this is a teenage camp, and there's, there's several of them, maybe four every year from this organization. Keep going. These kids, this is another camp. This is a 10-day camp. And who are they and what are they? They have just graduated from high school. This, this picture was taken maybe three months ago. So they are all now in the Israeli army. And this was a 10-day concentrated camp to really get them fired up in their faith, able to answer questions uh, that maybe their commanders would ask them, and how to witness how to do it in a way that can be understood by other soldiers there. And so this is an extremely important, important work. Next. Uh, here's a, Moti again in the green cap. He loves to go out and witness to the homeless in Tel Aviv. And so they give them uh, a meal and they witness to them. And you know, there are some of those in the congregation now that have come out of alcohol and drugs and are serving the Lord. Next. This is an example of a young couple in Israel that we help. We have, our vision is if we can help raise the, uh, the standard of living among believers, that makes a good witness. You understand? If you're just scraping along and trying to find enough money to feed you or your kids, that's not a great witness. So we send a lot of kids to college on scholarships. Believers. It's for the believers that we do this. And so this is a, a newlyweds, and they're in college right now. Next. We're also a publishing company. We found that when we started giving, uh, seeing people get saved years ago, we saw that if they were an Israeli who did not speak any other language but Hebrew, they seemed to grow slower in the Lord. And we began to realize that there were so few books where they could gain faith and strength and understanding of the Word of God. So we have now... 80 really, really faith-building books in our uh, online school, uh, uh, online um, store. And we have now begun to put them on online in a non-believing group. Uh, so we, uh, you, what do you call it? Not audio, I always get it mixed up. It just, you know, they're, on, they're online. Ebooks, ebooks. So we've got a bunch of ebooks now on the secular market, and people are buying these and reading them. So we're, that's, that's the direction we are going. Next. And this Bible, the narrated Bible, we, it's maybe our, going to be our greatest contribution to the gospel in Israel. 
It is a Bible that has a narration at the top explaining what you're about to read. Now, why is that important? Most Israelis don't read the Bible. You got it? They don't. They don't read the Bible in Hebrew. Why? Because it's old-fashioned Hebrew. It's 3,000, 2,000 years old. It's just like, how many of you have ever tried to read Chaucer? Even Shakespeare. So, this is, um, this is a narrated Bible where it, there's, a, there's a paragraph about what you're about to read so that they can understand that. And then at the bottom of the page, all the hard words we are putting with um, a little dictionary down at the bottom. And then it's a chronological Bible, which is fabulous. It means that when you have a prophet prophesying, you know which kings were in, 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 you know, in power at the time. And in the New Testament, you have Paul, uh, his journeys, and then the, the books that he wrote and so on. So this is a, um, a half a million, around a half a million euros to do, three-year work with scholars. And, um, but we are halfway through it, and we are, are really excited. We believe this is going to be a Bible. I, I, I envision putting a big, a big ad in one of the Hebrew newspapers and, and say, here's the Bible. Um, we will always sell it for as low as poss possible to give it value. And yet, um, we've never made a penny on any books. Never, never, because it's very expensive in Israel to do small amounts of Bibles or, or books. But that's what we're doing. We're getting the word of God into the body. Next, this is the congregation that we started, and uh, keep going. Just different pictures of this is, this is a congregation, because we, we're congregation people, right? You've got to be in a congregation if you're really going to grow, and keep going. This, keep going. This is a Ethiopian congregation, which we help, because the rent is very high, and so we help them. Next. This is an Arab congregation that we help. So this is what we do, folks. Want to show you now a, um, a video clip that shows a little bit more what we're doing. My husband will appear. 99% of Israelis don't know Yeshua as their Messiah. And we want to change that as much as you do. If you want young Israeli believers to grow into mature leaders, if you want to hear sounds of praise coming from Jerusalem, the city of worship, if you want to see Jews and Arabs experience the peace that surpasses all politics, if you want your church to get insights from over 40 years of living in the land of Israel, then you want Maoz Israel. Shani and Kobe, our daughter and son-in-law, are in, we are transitioning over a period of three years to our son-in-law and daughter taking over, and they are worshipers. This is their big, big thing. So uh, we have another four-minute video. Please put that on, and this is something that they put together. 99% of Israelis don't know Yeshua as their Messiah, and we want to change that as much as you do. If you want young Israeli believers to grow into mature leaders, if you want to hear sounds of praise coming from Jerusalem, the city of worship, if you want to see Jews and Arabs experience the peace that surpasses all politics, if you want your church to get insights from over 40 years of living in the land of Israel, then you want Maoz Israel. Yeah.
kids. Ten boom. We also tell stories with the Trutonic. Gvere Ten Boom. At you dat me ani. At you dat ma city. Avalach shav ani kulkach sameach shamashiach salachli al hashi abud lechataai ve al hashmashli. Gvere Ten Boom. את מדברת על סליחה, את יכולה לסלוח גם לי? Yes, you're beautiful When you chose to be with me You made me beautiful It's only beauty can surround you And you make me beautiful A king Do you see that God is doing something in Israel now? He is. I mean, I've been there a long time. I can tell you, it is amazing. It is amazing what God is doing. I want to give you, invite you to sign up for the Maoz Israel Report. It's free. You get it every month. You can get it either hard copy or uh, internet, whichever you want. And it will keep you abreast of what's going on in Israel. I do some writing now. My daughter is really a great writer too. She's a singer and a writer. So, um, Ashers, if you would just offer anybody who wants to sign up, uh, we'll uh, do that. And while you're doing that, while you sign up, and then we'll pick up the cards, and you'll, you'll get it every month, either way you want. And we're gonna play uh, as the closing song uh, a song that our daughter wrote, and our husband is a recorder, and as I told you, God gave them, dropped out of heaven, a fantastic studio, recording studio in Jerusalem. So the gospel is going out once more out of Jerusalem. Thank you.
just enter and through the presence of Yahweh All the angels around, it's really nothing profound To see them bowing in the presence of Yahweh I've heard stories told and now the mysteries unfold Call us friends.